Thinking about moving from the Big Apple to the Great Lakes state? Well, this video could be for you. In this video, we wanna give you a quick overview of everything from the housing statistics to a little bit about the difference between New York and Michigan. Hello and welcome to the Living in Detroit channel. Today in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about New York City, the Big Apple, right? It's the epicenter of the world. So many things happening there, so many things to do, right? And then you might be moving from there to Michigan. If that's you, this video is for you. So we've actually had a lot of recent clients move from the East Coast and several from New York back here to Detroit to Michigan for several reasons. Sometimes we see it because of friends and family. Sometimes we see it because people are li literally trying to escape the city a little bit, having a more slow paced life, thinking Midwest, thinking sometimes even like farmland and country and all that good stuff. And so we've seen a lot of people move from cities like New York to other places like Michigan. I have recently been to New York City. I really, really enjoyed it. I think it's a fantastic place. Had a lot of fun there. But this video is mostly to give you a rundown kind of comparing New York to Michigan. So if you're thinking about moving from New York back to Michigan or to Michigan, you can have a good understanding of if that might make sense for you and kind of a brief overview. That's the goal of this particular video. So jumping right into things, we always got to talk about the weather, right? That's a big piece for a lot of people. Again, New York, Detroit, not crazy different as far as, you know, um, longitude of where you sit on the map there. Um, but to give you the actual specifics, New York gets 46 inches of rain and Detroit gets 33 inches of rain. So actually less rain in Detroit as a whole than in New York City. Um, the high is very similar, about 84, 83 degrees between the two cities. And New York's winter low is 25 degrees. Detroit winter low is 18 degrees, according to our statistics. So my get a little bit colder in the winter here compared to New York, but similar summer temperatures and less rain in Detroit than New York. And this is, of course, the big difference. Um, the population, right? New York is 19 million people roughly, and Michigan population as a whole is 10 million. And this is the interesting part. New York City, 8.3 million people in the city of New York, and Detroit has 620,000. So obviously, New York City is one of the biggest cities in the world, right? Obviously, it's a huge city in our country. It's one of the biggest in the world. And in my opinion, um, you know, the statistics when you compare city to city is just sort of flawed. Like, yes, Detroit city limits, Detroit at one point had several million people and it has changed quite a bit through the years. But for the most part, Southeast Michigan, Metro Detroit is much more based on the surrounding communities. I'm not saying you don't have any of that in New York itself, the city compared to outside the city. Obviously, there's a lot of people when you start to go to New Jersey and different places. But if you look at Detroit city limits and you go a little bit further out and do general Wayne County, you start to look at four or five million people real quick. Obviously, it's not anywhere near the congestion or population as New York City at 8.3 million. However, there is a lot more people, I think, than on paper when you compare Detroit to Michigan. So just an interesting way to think about it, but obviously no brainer, drastically different city. Um, one of the things that I like about Detroit itself, if you're thinking about moving to Detroit compared to other places in Michigan, um, you still have the city vibe, but it is very much a small town, big city. What I mean by that is if you live in the city and you work in the city, you network in the city, you know, you run into a lot of the same people. You can do a lot of networking in the city, but you still have, you know, a bigger city type vibe. There's the buildings and the restaurants and the bars and all, all the great things to do in Detroit. A lot of great culture being formed or has a lot of deep history and great culture in Detroit and continues to grow in that area as well. However, it is, you know, not this massive city where you can see a lot of the same people you can network, you can grow your network and be maybe a bigger fish in a smaller pond, so to speak, in the city of Detroit. Up next, comparing schools between New York City and Michigan. Now, this is a very, very tough thing to do. There's a lot of different ways to do it. We could give total school districts. We can do student to teacher ratio, all this different stuff. We chose to go a little bit of a different direction on this particular video, which is comparing University of Michigan to NYU. Again, obviously, that's not the only school in Michigan. Uh, NYU is not the only school in New York, right? There's there's a lot of there's a lot of different comparisons here, but I think it gives you a general understanding of at least these two uh, universities and can understand stand a little bit deeper there. Also, I think that University of Michigan and NYU are kind of comparables. They're slightly different for a lot of different reasons, but I think they're somewhat comparables in my opinion, and we'll dive into the data of what that looks like. So in-state tuition at University of Michigan, about 15,000. In-state tuition of NYU, $55,000. So that's a huge difference right away. If you live and move to Michigan and are living in Michigan, in-state tuition, if you can't get into University of Michigan, is going to be much less expensive than NYU. Out-of-state tuition, however, is very much 
much in alignment. So uh, University of Michigan, 53,000. Out-of-state tuition for NYU is 55,000. So very similar costs there um, for out-of-state tuition. Um, these numbers get interesting quick. Acceptance rate at U of M is 20.2%. Acceptance rate of uh, NYU is 12.5%. I think it makes sense. There's a lot of people in New York, probably a lot of people that want to go to NYU. It's a little bit harder to get into, but the acceptance rate is close to half NYU compared to University of Michigan, which is interesting because in my own head, I always imagine U of M being a great school. I think it is a great school. And I think NYU also being a great school, but the acceptance rate is pretty interesting to see that, that ma massive difference there. Um, student teacher ratio is another one. University of Michigan, 12 to one, NYU eight to one. So a little bit better student te teacher ratio um, at NYU compared to University of Michigan, but both very, very good. You know. 10 roughly people for both universities uh, per student to ratio is a, is a good number in my opinion and last but not least this is the big number of course it's going to be graduation rate i think this shows us a couple things uh right when people sign up how long do they stay do they like the university i think it also shows us when we talk about graduation rate of how hard is it to graduate in some in some aspects so um university of michigan graduation rate 90 percent nyu 86 percent. so it's hard to get into both these schools right once you do get into these schools the graduation rate is pretty high the major difference from my analysis here is really going to be in-state tuition at University of Michigan compared to in-state tuition um, in NYU. Drastic difference there, you know, 15,000 compared to 55,000. Now, um, another thing to consider, we don't talk about a lot in this channel, but it's an interesting uh, thing to talk through since we're on the topic. If you live in the city of Detroit and grow up in the city of Detroit and go to Detroit public schools um, and graduate from Detroit public schools, the city will actually, between the city and the state, fund they will actually pay for you to go to college. So if you grow up in the city of Detroit, you go to Detroit public schools, you get free college should you meet certain criteria. And it's not crazy hard. It's pretty much like graduate and be from the area. That's about it. I think there might be a couple other criteria which we could put in here, but it's an interesting statistic um, or interesting thing to think about. So if you're thinking about moving to Detroit, you're going to school, you're going to public schools in Detroit, then you could get free college, which is a nice bonus. There's also the Kalamazoo Promise, which I think still exists um, as well. So if you're moving to the west side of the state, Kalamazoo has a similar gig where if you graduate from Kalamazoo schools, it might be just for Western, but I think you get um, free tuition throughout the state as well too. So lots of things and programs geared towards hopefully that graduation rate um, in high school to be able to move into college and have it be affordable options for many folks. Next is going to be public schools. Again, I don't want to spend too much time on education here because it's kind of a hard thing to compare, but just to give you interesting statistics, uh, New York has 40 3,360 schools. Uh, Michigan has 2,959. So um, obviously quite a few more schools in New York, 668 districts. Michigan still has 539 school districts throughout the state. Um, as a state aggregate, New York 12 to 1 student ratio, Michigan 18 to 1 student ratio. And the graduation rate is similar in New York to Michigan um, for K through 12 at 83% in New York and 81% in Michigan. So obviously in New York, sometimes it's more condensed in certain areas, but Michigan has a pretty big footprint overall so we need a good amount of di districts and there's a plethora of different options depending on where you're moving right are you in southeast michigan the west side of the state way up in the up where are you at throughout the state um, when you're looking at your home search and uh, there's a, a, a handful of different school options in all of those communities okay one of the biggest reasons why we see people moving from new york city and cities like it to a city like detroit or throughout Southeast Michigan or Michigan as a whole is a lot of times the housing statistics and cost of living. So it goes without saying that if you're in Manhattan, New York, obviously it's one of the most expensive real estate markets on the entire planet. And so a big reason why people move to a city like Detroit, Metro Detroit or Michigan is to lower that cost of living and lowering a lot of their expenses. We wanted to kind of compare some of that just to give you some statistics here in 2024 so you can see what that means for you in reality if you're thinking about moving to the area. First and foremost, um, is going to be our average price range comparing New York to Michigan. Average price range currently in Michigan as a whole is 300,000 with a medium of 246. That's an aggregate across the state. Um, in New York, that price range is really in that $518,000. So you're, you know, significantly less, obviously, um, in Michigan compared to New York as a whole. And then if you really start diving into some of the other statistics, it's pretty daunting to say the least. I actually pulled up just like a recent article, CNBC, but it says the average month 
monthly rent in Manhattan is up to $5,500, almost $5,600. Uh, median rent at $4,400 in Manhattan itself, right? That's the rent cost and stuff like that. But when you really start comparing, you know, New York to Michigan, it's a hard comparison, right? Because if I compare downtown New York, um, you know, Manhattan, uh, Midtown, some of these really high end areas, right? It's just a different comparable than comparing Detroit on average, but it's obviously significantly less expensive um, to live um, in Michigan compared to New York. Now, when you compare Michigan compared to New York as a whole, um, again, median price range, 518 in New York, 300,000 in Michigan. And then you start kind of going down from there, depending on beds, baths, all that good stuff. Obviously condos are significantly more expensive in New York than Michigan as a whole, um, because a lot of the condos are downtown. Um, days on market is an interesting statistic though. So Michigan is averaging 29 days on market and New York 45 days on market. So homes are selling significantly faster in Michigan, even over, you know, New York as a whole, which are more expensive. So it kind of makes sense, right? Cause the homes are so much more expensive. It should take a little bit longer to sell. There's probably a little bit less um, demand. And again, one of the reasons why there is so much demand in Michigan currently is a lot of people are moving here to have more affordable housing, which makes sense. The houses are less expensive. There's more uh, there's more potential uh, demand for that type of marketplace, which is why our days on market is lower. And then you start looking at medium price per square foot. So we talk about the price per square foot, be meaning total size of the property, uh, the total size of the property, I'm sorry, total price of the property divided by the total size gives you a price per square foot, right? So we start to see how much each literal square foot is in different places. And Michigan as a whole is $177 per square foot. New York is $423 per square foot. So well over double the cost. And again, I know you start going to downtown, you can have 2000 plus um, dollars per square feet in certain areas. So that obviously influenced things quite a bit. Um, and then kind of just comparing, you know, different types of homes. Um, I would say for the most part, you know, when you're comparing New York to a city like Detroit, they're both old cities. So you have a lot of old architecture. Obviously you have not nearly as many of the same high rise type apartments and units as New York City. Um, a lot less of the old school townhouses that New York City has in a city like Detroit. And then once you get outside of Detroit and get outside of the city and into you know the surrounding communities, obviously there's a plethora of different homes in New York compared to Detroit. So, you know, we have homes like bungalow houses, which is, um, you know, a lot of mid-century type builds, Colonials, Craftsman's, Cape Cod Ranches, Tudors, Queen Anne's, uh, Greek revival, well, revival, Contemporary, all of which New York has as a whole as well too. But again, I think that that major difference is going to be some of the properties in the city itself as a whole. And of course you go upstate New York and there's big estates and stuff like that. But Michigan has similar vibes as well too. You start heading up north, you get on the west coast, you get in different pockets of Michigan. There's some beautiful, big, really high-end luxury mansions and estates on lakefront property compared to oceanfront property in New York. So lots of parallels there. Again, comparing New York City to Detroit or New York City um, to any city in Michigan is going to be a hard comparison. Now, if you start aggregating, you know, Michigan compared to New York, there's a lot of similarities, I would say as well, too. You have, of course, city living, you have these bigger towns similar to New York City. When you when you start heading north, west um, in the state of Michigan, there's a lot of beautiful scenery, a lot of really cool places to check out. We have tons of lakes. Obviously, in New York, you have the ocean frontage and stuff like that. But we have tons of lakes. We have the Great Lakes. And so you get kind of the best of both worlds, which is why I think it's such a sought out area, which I think is one of the reasons why a lot of people are moving here. They're leaving the city. They can move to a city like Detroit or one of the other cities throughout you know, Michigan as a whole and can still have that up north feel. You can travel throughout the state and enjoy at a much more affordable rate than a state like New York City. So lots of things to do. Obviously, in New York, there's some beautiful things to do as well, too, here in Michigan. You know, deep dive in our channel. We can we, we deep dive a lot there, but we want to try to compare as best as possible New York to Detroit because we keep getting calls from people moving from New York City. So we figured this video will give you a brief overview, overview, talk about some of the housing statistics, some of those general um, differences so you can have a better understanding. My name is Matt Talbot. This is the Living in Detroit channel. Thanks so much uh, for checking out our video comparing New York to Michigan.